Today is Thursday and that means acting analysis for animators and today I'm going to take a look at the TV show season 1 of Altered Carbon. Alright, Alta Carbon is a show on Netflix and if you have Netflix you can watch season 1 right now and it's actually been out for quite some time. This is uh, episode 8 and I want to talk about character interaction, looks and eye lines and kind of villainous type of behavior, all that stuff that I love. So let's get right into it, I'll show you what I mean. So throughout season 1 you had this character kind of chasing this character who is the main character and I won't say too much and spoil too much about character changes and swaps and things. I thought it was kind of interesting uh, show actually. So if you've seen it, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Uh, not everything was great, but there's some cool stuff towards it. But anyway, so these guys are constantly chasing and fighting each other. And now they're trapped in this elevator where at this point they're not allowed to fight. So there's a lot of no blinking stairs. It's kind of a power struggle and you can see they are just they're not liking each other there's a lot of confrontations and i love this moment here this is such a cool moment of him doing this and you can read into this as much as you want to this could be your you know symbol of a gun he's, he's telling him he could potentially uh, be telling him i'm about to kill you don't come between me and my objective but i love how he is not wavering he's not blinking he's absolutely steady in his resolve they're both just ready to kill each other, but they can't do anything. At this point, again, I don't want to spoil it, but at this point, it's just they have to be together in this elevator. They got to get to a certain place, certain person. That's, that's how it is. And I love that for them, that's their conflict. Besides their personal conflict and fighting each other and wanting to kill each other, at this point, they're not allowed to. So they have to go back and forth and kind of demean each other via, with words and just say things. It's just a great moment in, the, in this season. But going back, again, this is just such a cool moment of that. That little interaction, you can see how much the head moves. I'm talking now specifically in the animation terms. The contact, you can see the movement in the skin here, you know, depending on how you uh, your style is going to be, how, how realistic your animation is going to be. But that type of thing, you don't have to do all the crazy, um, you know, skin deformation, but you can still kind of move your eyebrow shape there. But it's important to have, bam, you can see this over one frame. This would be a linear key. <laughs> as that head moves over just to get that really harsh impact and to me that bam makes it even more interesting because he is not blinking if you have someone or if you tap someone on there like this you probably expect that person to blink especially because it's so close to the eye but the fact that they're not doing that goes back into all the stuff that i love about eye line and eyesight and how long is someone looking and blinking or not and what does that mean like the intensity of it so after all this the other part that i love is as they go back they continue to insult each other and say whatever they say. He smokes a lot in the show and cigarettes are maybe not that much anymore, but it used to be kind of a, a common prop in animation. There's just some things that people do, like if someone picks something up and does this little thing or that or looking at the watch or tapping their feet or doing these type of gestures, just a couple of overused things. And I think cigarette props used to be the thing. I don't, I don't really see it that much anymore, but if you use this, you can use this to your advantage in a way that kind of tells us something about their relationship and this could be positive or negative and in this case it's negative. So as he lights the cigarette, what I love about this scene, as he keeps talking to him and, and you know, as they have their standoff, I love <laughs> this moment. It's so good. He blows the smoke on purpose his way. He leans away because he hates that. And it's just such a great usage of prop. So if you have a cigarette, if you want to use this or whatever other prop you have, how could you use this in terms of a relationship between the two? If even if you don't know anything, if you just start here, right? Well, let's pretend here. So we, we know, okay, that person has a cigarette and then you just watch this. I think it's pretty clear that this person does not like this person. There's something going on. And then they, they continue, you know, with their banter and all that good stuff where they have to stay somewhat civilized and they continue with whatever transaction and all that good stuff. But this moment, love it. So what could you do? What could you do with a prop? Like one of the classic things, if someone has a cigarette and doesn't like kids, they would kind of pop the balloon of a kid. But if you have any other prop, anything that one character likes and knows that the other character doesn't like, what could you do with that prop so we get to know more about the character? So again, for me, it's not just well, I have a prop, I want to use it, or I don't know what to do with my hands and fingers and I got to use a prop. It's, well, if you use a prop, 
then what could you use it for? Is it something that will tell us something about that character just by itself or a relationship with another character? And there's more in this season. I thought there's some cool, especially cool action stuff. But in terms of, again, character things that I like to pick out that you might be able to use your animation, I think this moment really, really stood out. Again, there's some other stuff, a lot of visual, cool visual stuff. So watch it, watch it if you're uh, into that type of sci-fi. Let me know if you've seen it. Let me know what you think and if you've seen uh, any other things. But that was kind of it. That's kind of just that, that contact point. It's very important that when you have even if it's short, then it's not prolonged contact of holding and pulling or, or, you know, like longer fighting and interaction with creatures and pulling stuff. Even if it's something small like this, that you make sure that the contact is really visible and with your linear key showing how harsh you're gonna do this, or you're gonna do something soft and then the person just has that and then pushes the character off. All that stuff, again, that timing is up to you. It's up to you to really decide on a frame by frame basis, the impact. And if it's something that's kind of just like that, if it's that, or if it's that, again, tells us something about the character, but it's always different, right? So everything, every move, every every single frame that you decide on will tell us something different about the character. So you have to be fully in control about your keys, your ins and, ins and outs, your, your contact points. I'm just super picky about that because it's so cool because it gives you so many tools in terms of, well, this is what the character feels. This is how they feel towards each other. And this is how I'm going to show it. So if you have contacts like that, and this could be all kinds of things. This could be, I just watched Princess Bride recently where the grandfather takes the cheek and does that, you know, with the kid who doesn't like it. Or you could do something where someone just kind of, maybe they talk too much and then the other person puts the hand on the chin, goes, okay, and then pushes them away. It's kind of like, I'm done with you. I don't want to hear you anymore. Just all those contact points are really interesting to animate. They're technically potentially also very difficult, but I think it's worth exploring. So again, if you have two characters, and it could be also with one character and the other character is potentially off screen with, so you blow the smoke to someone off screen. Um, but if you have another character and you have props, Think about that. Think about how you could use the prop so it's not just there because you want a prop, but it's something that will enhance A, the shot, B, will tell us something about the character, and also will give you opportunity to show off your, your humor, your sense of entertainment, or like I always say, it's okay to animate villains. In this case, villainous behavior or interaction where the characters are not good, they're not friendly. And I think that's just, it's something worth exploring because there's so many shots out there in reels with characters that are nice. I'm not saying that you should be always mean, I'm saying in terms of character development and stuff you could animate, there's always a villain that most of the time there's a villain in a movie. So why not explore that? character state of mind and then animate that to have variety uh, in your reel. And with variety, of course, not just humans, but also creatures. So again, think about how you could humanize creature animation and then maybe that prop interaction or whatever. Maybe it's not a prop, maybe it's a specific animal thing where maybe your animal has a really long tongue like a lizard type thing or a snake type of thing. And maybe the other person doesn't like to be touched. So you got two creatures talking, at one point the lizard or, or snake or whatever looks over and it's kind of a and that tongue goes over just enough to touch the cheek of the other character and it goes like, don't stop touching me. So this could be a moment where they interact like that where maybe it's not a prop per se, but it's part of a creature feature, you know what I mean? So you can take in creature behavior, still have them act like humans, but then use the creature observation stuff that you studied to again, add something to the shot. So they're more mean to each other, more of a villain or a, a good character or a positive character, if you will, whatever you want to do. But that's it. And if this was helpful, as always, I would appreciate a like. If you want to subscribe to this channel, subscribe and hit that bell button so you get the notifications about all my uploads. And if you watch this whole thing again till the very end, as always, I appreciate it. And I will see you tomorrow for part three of my Q&A and potentially the last part, depending on how many questions are left. Thank you.